has the eye attached to it. And right there, if I can stick this little camera in there, this is probably a horrible, oh, there's the servo, right there. So there's the servo wheel, you can see it, that white part. Now the servo wheel has a screw attached to it and has a copper rod attached to that. Now the copper rod is set at an angle so that it's attached to the copper eye blink mechanism, which is attached to the skin, so that when the servo's angle moves, like Tank described earlier, it moves the eye blink downward. And that's the top eyelid, and down there is the bottom eye, right there. And both of those move together because the programmable chip thing down here moves them at the same time. So, the both eyes are like that, and the hardest part, which is what Ben did amazingly here, is making sure that everything fits into this mask, and that it's not poking you in the eye, or killing you, or doing anything, and making sure that the movement on the front of the face looks natural. That's pretty much the hardest part doing all of this, is making sure that everything is stable, like these aluminum cut pieces here, and everything is perfectly you know, set up so that it doesn't interfere with the wearer, it doesn't interfere with any other servos, and all that is set up to be okay. And I think the eyebrow is just top two up here, which you can just barely see. I feel like we're like looking at the space shuttle right now. You can see like debris float by. There it is. There's the eyebrow, which is moving on the uh, top two servos. So there you go. Just a brief introduction to servo controls. And you can buy these online. I think Ben got them from like servocity.com or something like that, and he also bought a really simple controller that did the same thing as the program so that you can test the movements and everything. But a lot of it is pretty, you can totally do it in your garage, it just takes a lot of innovation and a lot of trial and error, so there you go. Isn't it fancy? Woo! Space Shuttle Space! So many people have asked, this is how the grunt's jaw is controlled. There's a, uh, a little cup that sits around my chin, and attached to that is a hinge, and on the hinge is a pipe, and on that pipe is another hinge, and on that hinge is another hinge. And it all goes back to this hinge. And when all those hinges work in concert, you get... You get a talking grunt. Also, you can see that there's a to make sure that the jaw's movement is natural. This isn't just the regular pivot. It's a hand. It's kind of like an, at an angle, so that when Grunt's jaw moves, it moves more like an animal than just like you know just a flapping puppet. So it looks a little bit more realistic. And there's also a lip curl in here, which you can't see. That's another hinge attached to the top of his lip that also pivots when um, Tango moves his mouth right here. But these are just hinges from Home Depot ground down and uh, welded, well, solder, solder welded to copper piping. So, and also stuck on with uh, epoxy plumber's putty. And this was built onto Tank's head cast right here, so it all fits perfectly, so that the wearer, you know, fits on their face and everything like that. That's important. It's important to have a head cast when you're doing something like this, because it makes everything a lot easier. So, yeah. There you go, puppetry. Woo! Oh, you got a good shot of the Oh yeah, now you can see the servo, so it's not just like looking into... How ridiculously space. close everything is to Yeah, so when Tank's walking around, it's just like poking him in the eye. <laughs> like, what's that? Oh, it's a servo in my face. That's cool. And yeah, well that's, the, that's the, the wonders of wearing a ridiculous costume suit. They have to do it in Hollywood too, I'm sure. I mean, if you watch like behind the scenes things, you see like them put on these masks, and they probably got like 50 different little servos that are worn over their face, they probably can't even see. But at least in the old days, I don't know about now, it'd just be like CG or something. Oh, yeah. CG. They wouldn't spend 12 bucks on a No way. They're going to spend 12 bucks on an intern to make their CG. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, also, here's another thing about the head. Is there's a snap ring around this. And usually, if we were doing this properly, the snap ring would maybe be attached to another piece of foam latex or under the armor. But we just took a piece of black material and so snaps onto the whole thing so that when you snapped it around it just looked like he had on kind of a space suit sort of thing so that's why that's there too but, um, and also inside of the mouth is a, ni a nylon stocking if you can see that there he had a tongue for a while but tank didn't see so he took the tongue <laughs> it looked cool though it looked really cool but so yeah that's a nylon stocking it's just too damn tall yeah and um the teeth are just um just uh uh, skull 
Sculpey, but it's the translucent Sculpey with some weird, like, fluffy stuff that I use for the jaw and we just aged them and everything. This is latex glove on the side of his mouth right here, so that it makes it look like he has, like, a, uh, like a tendon where the mouth opens. I mean, we had to take some artistic license because that's not really in the game. You don't really see any tendons in his mouth, but, you know, we do what we had to do. All right, so there you go. That was all of our fun technical jargon that I could handle explaining. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Um, but yeah, so let's see. What else? We brought the tally helmet, Grunt's head, and we also brought some of the tally fabric, which we got printed on spoonflower.com. And that was um, that was just a. Uh, all those. You guys. You guys always call when you have one image and then you repeat them. And then tiling. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Taylor did this, and Taylor's the CG I'm character Taylor. modeler. No, you're not. <laughs> but, um, you're Miranda. Yeah. You're Miranda. Yeah. Where's my Miranda costume? Nope. All right. Anyway, um, so. And we're just kicking around ideas for next year. We don't really know what we're going to do yet. Um, we're, we're, I say what I'm going to do. Oh, we know. No, we it's don't just know. It's, it's, it's not secret. I know that I'm making a blast of the Hanar Spectre puppet. So, that's my next project because I we'll need some... Deeper. Look for it next year. We'll Check, it out. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. Don't look at You'll it too close, up. though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do a quick little montage and then we're ready for questions. Start to finish montage, isn't it? Like, it's short. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, all right, get ready. It's a surprise. So, yeah. I think. Oh, no.
fiberglass cap, a cap, and inside it had just some, uh, well, it was supposed to have some padding, but I ended up forgetting to put it in there. <laughs> but if you're doing it all like nice and official, it has like padding, so it lays perfectly against your face. So that's the whole. And then it's stepped off with aluminum rods with another layer of fiberglass on top that holds the structure of grunt. Yeah, so. don't you want to volunteer and be a costume actor for us now? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's a blast. Did just so you know, Tim was fine, even lived. without the padding. He it lived. was just hot. He lived. He lived. We, just, like, we just, like, you know, threw wine at him or water or something and made sure that he <laughs> threw wine at him. <laughs> Mostly alcohol. Mostly alcohol. We, just, we threw alcohol in his face and hoped he didn't get his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. There's people at the mic now. So, all right. Question? Question? Yep, I have a question. Um, What's your name? Um, my name's Kyle. Nice to meet you, Kyle. Fifth PAX. Hooray for PAX. Woo! That's what I'm saying. That always works. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little background of how you got from ordinary person to making <laughs> super awesome costumes. Like, how did that transition happen? Did you make terrible costumes at first, or were you just instantly really good at it? What happened is uh, got a telephone booth and um, came out of it. Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not Doctor Who. Um, yes, I did make terrible costumes at first. I made a tiefling from D and D, and I made horns out of Sculpey, and I thought that I was badass. <laughs> but um, and I wore wait, 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 I wore to the Comic Con masquerade, and I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I was like, I don't know. What's the worst costume you guys have ever made? Well, <laughs> I know you are. What is it? What is no, it? No, he no. Made a, no. He made a mace from a uh, oh, no, crap no, that weighed like 50 pounds. <laughs> and I was like, Now Why imagine you me, a, a young strapping lad of 125, trying to lift something that weighs a third of my weight. That <laughs> was amazing. I, was, I walked out of the hotel room with this thing and I was like, Alright, I'm going to carry this around the gun. No, I'm not. <laughs> he lived. I mean, I lived. No, but, but seriously. Like, Wait, Scott, what's, your, what's the worst costume you've ever made? I haven't made a costume yet. I just helped with costumes. It's true. But you did a fabulous job. I, I was costume. <laughs> I was in charge of costumes. I yeah. So that was and one I made season. guns. I made guns. She and made sure no one passed out. Guns are cool. Yeah. I, guess, I guess the new launcher would be one. Yeah, and then we stepped on. <laughs> but anyway, um, you just have to practice. It's just practice. And it's just being aware of what, I guess, what gets a good reaction when you're at a convention. You know, if you're walking around and everyone's like, who's that? Like, are you are you roller derby? And I'm like, okay, no, no, that's not, no. But it's just, you just have to be your worst, you have to be your worst critic. You have to go, I know what I did wrong here. This is how I can improve myself, and I'm going to do it better next time. And that's, and listen to everyone. Listen to the, you know, honestly, listen to the trolls. So if they say something, think, you know what, I'll do it different next time. But you just have to be honest with yourself. So it was, it was convention costumes, it wasn't like... Halloween costumes that periodically got oh, no, better I, from. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. started with convention costumes. I started with Comic Con and then BlizzCon and then Comic Con and then BlizzCon and I've I've done um, yeah mostly those and just like things I've done in my free time. But sculpting like I did before that I've always practiced sculpting just for fun. But it's just practice. So thanks. Yay! Thank you. <clears throat> right, I guess. Uh, well, What's your name? Possible. <laughs> Uh, he has been and I guess one of my first questions is uh, how, like, you know, you said that uh, Bauer has uh, backed you up a lot for all of your costumes. Like, how, did, how did you uh, peak their interest or how, how did they notice you and how did they, how did they supported you? We were really lucky that um, we chose to make costumes based on something. I mean, I think all of you who make costumes do something that first you're like absolutely obsessed with and secondly, that other people care about. So we were really, it was a huge coincidence and we were very fortunate that A, we were so obsessed with it that we could work on it for like three to six months. Um, B, that other people liked it too. And C, that we got a Kotaku. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, no, no. But like, but you know, Bioware. Bioware, for instance, is a is a really great, friendly company. If you go down there and talk to any of the guys, they they'll they'll talk to you for as long as you'll talk to them. They're they're really great guys. So with that, that just kind of all came into place. I mean, they're cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, we we if we try to make some like giant Marvel costume. I I don't think that we would have Stanley like bang, banging down our door, but. 
I, we were really fortunate. It all, it all yeah. comes down to that word. And it's well. games. It's games. I mean, games have a community. I mean, we have a really supportive community that appreciates artwork and appreciates things that people do. And I think that has a big, it's a big difference between someone replicating a movie costume and someone replicating a game costume. That's just my experience.